Hello, everybody. I'm Gary Laubach, along with John Leo. Mike Joseph not available today to go behind the mic. And uh, John comes up off the sideline, and he'll help us today from behind the mic. And, John, before we look at anything about the Georgetown game, let's, let's take a look at where Lafayette sits right now. Colgate in first place at 3-1. and one. They have a bye this week. And then they have Lafayette and Georgetown to finish up. So one would think, looking at Georgetown, that Lafayette is their key football game. Lafayette, of course, cannot look past Georgetown, but they have Georgetown, then they have Colgate, then they have Lehigh. So their fate is in their hands. And Lehigh, with the win over Colgate, they have Bucknell, Holy Cross, and Lafayette. They lost the Fordham, but that loss doesn't hurt them all that much if they win out. So it will be an interesting last three weeks of football in the Patriot League. Well, Gary, I guarantee you one thing. Uh, back in August, if we were having this conversation, I think we'd all be thrilled. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what John Garrett and the staff have, have, have done with this team after that start to get them back on track, to meet the Patriot League season uh, the way they have, and to put themselves in this position, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's just terrific. So, uh, yeah, you know what? The game for Lafayette folks to watch this week, other than the Lafayette-Georgetown game, is probably the Lehigh-Bucknell game. If Lehigh goes up to Bucknell and holds serve, um, then this comes down to a three-team round robin in the mm -hmm. last two weeks of the season. No question about it. So uh, let's take a look. We usually take a look at the opponent first. Not this week. We're going to take a look at Lafayette first. Coming off a bye week, off a horrendous loss that is just a gut-wrenching loss. The defense doesn't give up any points in that ball game, and yet they lose in overtime. So the bye week, good or bad? I think it. I think it was terrific, given the the uh, the emotional uh, state of the team after that uh, game. I mean, when I talked to John. Uh, coming off the field, uh, you could just tell his body language. There were two games I remember this year talking to John after the game. One was after the uh, the Villanova game when uh, uh, he was just stunned uh, with, with the way things went mm -hmm, down there. Mm -hmm. And the other one was the Bucknell game. Uh, uh, you know, he, he, you remember his words, no one deserves to lose a game like that. I think he was he was right. Uh, when you think of the, the, uh, the shift in, uh, in, in destiny uh, based on that game. If, uh, if Lafayette pulls it out in overtime, uh, we're really in the catbird seat. So, yeah, I, I think that, uh, uh, again, if we were having this discussion in August, I think we'd all be thrilled and kudos to John and his staff and the kids for hanging in there, bouncing back, and uh, putting themselves in a good position. Which leads me to the next question in that ball game. Two interceptions lead to the two touchdowns by Bucknell. They win the ball game 13 to seven. Uh, can you put yourself inside the mind now of Sean O'Malley and what his psyche is like going into this week? Well, you know what, this, there's been a lot of discussion about this. Uh, uh, we, we've really not seen a backup quarterback at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I you know, uh, I, I think it has more to do with getting in the si inside the head of John Garrett. He's got so much experience, especially at the quarterback position. And I think early on he made the, uh, he made the commitment to hitch his wagon to this young freshman uh, and he's riding it. And uh, uh, so I think Sean O'Malley's psyche is solid. And I think because of, be, because uh, his coach has shown such confidence in him. He's lived with the ups and the downs, and uh, I think that's the least of the worries. I think Sean O'Malley is solid, and uh, hopefully he'll continue to grow. A, a running game always helps a quarterback, so we need to shore up the run game. But despite the offensive shortcomings, I think Sean O'Malley is going to be fine. And certainly kudos. If we're going to pass out kudos, it has to go to the defense for the Lafayette Leopards, and none bigger than Brandon Bryant. Brandon Bryant now with 109 tackles, leads the Patriot League in tackles, has 50 more tackles tackles than any other Lafayette Leopard. Uh, that's the kind of domination he has shown this year at linebacker. All right, Georgetown. We've got to worry about this football team as they have lost seven in a row. They won their opener. That's their only win, but they're feisty. They're tough. They're a lot like us. They don't run the ball very well at all, and uh, they throw the ball probably because they have to, much like we throw the ball because we have to. Their defense, though, is not bad at all, John. Uh, this is an interesting football game where we're going to have to put points on the board offensively, and this is one we can't look past. We've got to win this game in order to make the next two extremely important. All of the above. <laughs> and I'll tell you, you know, Gary, it is. You, you, Lafayette is not in a position obviously, where they can look past anybody. You and I and, and, the, and the folks who follow the team from the outside have the luxury of looking at the schedule, comparing scores, and all that kind of stuff. John Garrett has been saying it from day one. It's the next, it's the task at hand. It's the next job. Uh, if Lafayette stubs their toe down in D.C., everything's out the window. Uh, so it's a very important game. Lafayette cannot afford to look past Georgetown. You're right. 
they, 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 they have been frustrated running the football this year. There's no question about it. One thing uh, jumped out at me, Gary, is that uh, of all of the teams in the FCS, uh, they rank 22nd uh, in uh, return yardage. Mm -hmm. So our special teams are going to have – that's the one area where uh, in a game that uh, is going to probably be a defensive struggle, uh, closely contested, um, special teams can always play a role, and that's one area where Georgetown is not bad. So who does Lafayette need to worry about? Well, they have a sophomore quarterback at Georgetown, Gunther Johnson. He has uh, been okay 52% of the time he completes his passes, but he's got a terrific receiver in Michael Dureas. He is second in the Patriot League in reception yards, catches, and yards per game. So he is certainly someone they have to look out for. On the defensive side, you have to find David Akiri. He's making a lot of tackles, but he's a safety. And if a safety is making a lot of tackles, you're usually gaining some good yardage. The game's at Cooper Field on Saturday afternoon. It is a 2 o'clock start. It is on the Patriot League Network. It is not on the Lafayette Sports Network. But we will be busy also on Saturday afternoon at 1 o'clock when the Penn State basketball team comes here to play a charity game against the Lafayette Leopard men. Uh, that ball game will be on the Lafayette Sports Network. So that is Lafayette Penn State at 1 o'clock. If your game is more basketball than football, then watch that. If it's more football than basketball, then go to the Patriot League Network. My thanks to John again for filling in for Mike Joseph. We'll be back with you with the Colgate game in two weeks, and let's hope that is the most important game of the season maybe in the last five years. We'll be the, behind the mic for that. Thank you.